Hello everybody and welcome to a video sponsored by Lumix. Now if you're watching this video in the first sort of month or so after it's gone live, then the chances are I'm somewhere in the world, not in the UK, shooting right this second with a Lumix camera trying to improve my photography. I'm making a video about it. Uh, and this video, like most of them, is, is about trying to improve your photography. Sadly, this one is gonna have to wait a minute because I need this piece of paper to, uh, to help with this video. And unfortunately, I was born left-handed, or in other words, unable to use scissors. I might have to go and ask a neighbor. Uh, anyway, this video. A few years ago, I read a book called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And in that book, he talks about this concept of 10,000 hours to mastery, how it takes 10,000 hours to master a skill. And it's become quite a popular theory. There are also quite a few people who dispute it, people who think that um, natural talent is a thing that comes into play, people who think that it's the quality of practice that matters, not just the quantity, and people that think that you just actually don't need that much time to master a lot of skills. Now, I'm a big believer in the concept of practice. In fact, another book that I read a few years ago was a book called Bounce by a guy called Matthew Saeed, a former table tennis player, professional table tennis player, and now a writer and journalist. And in that book, he argues that he doesn't believe that natural talent as a concept exists. He thinks that success in many fields is down to opportunity and practice. And in that book, he talks about how child prodigies very rarely have unusual genes or unusual genetics. Typically though, they have very unusual upbringings. And at the heart of those unusual upbringings is practice. Hours and hours and hours of practice. So for this video I've decided to take that theory and try and work out how you should spend 10,000 hours on, uh, on photography in order to improve your photography the most. And in fact it doesn't have to be 10,000 hours, that's, that's a lot of hours, but I've tried to break it down in a way that regardless of how much time you have, I basically try to think about what you should spend that time on in order to improve your, your photography the most. That's this video. Yeah, finish my cuttings, eventually. Also, the concept of 10,000 hours is quite a sort of high, so it's a big number, and it's difficult to quantify what that looks like. So basically, 10,000 hours is 20 hours a week for 10 years, or 40 hours a week for five years. So a full-time job for five years, basically. Long time, and I don't come from this, from like the, the top of the mountain. I, I don't consider myself a master of photography. Obviously I'm not, that's 10,000 hours is a long time. And even though I'm a full-time photographer, not all of my time is spent doing photography. In fact, most of my time is spent doing business things and invoices and plans and contracts and emails and all that kind of stuff. So I'm somewhere on the mountain to mastery. Hopefully I'm heading in the right direction, but I don't want this to come across as like a, a blueprint to mastery because ultimately I, I don't know myself. This is just my opinion on, on what I think you should, uh, you should aim for in terms of getting to, to mastery. And uh, it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts in the comments below. So I've basically cut out some things that'll make up a, a pie chart or a pizza chart. And the first thing is genre exploration. That overhead shot is obviously, I'm not doing that now. I'll, I'll do that after. Now genre exploration is, uh, is something that I've put about 10% of importance of, of the, the whole pie, so about a thousand hours. And what it is, basically, I don't think there is such a thing as being a master of photography. Typically the most established, well-known photographers are not well-known just as photographers. They're very, very good at photographing specific things. So that might be surf, mountains, people, buildings, war. It could be all kinds of things, but they're known for photographing a particular kind of thing. And that's because you need to become acquainted and comfortable in a particular environment before you can really hope to start taking good photos of it. And so spending time in lots of different environments and situations will hopefully help give you a hand to learn what kind of thing you would like to take photos of. Because in my experience, when you start out in photography, you're kind of inclined to just take photos of everything because the process of taking photos itself is enjoyable. But as time goes on, from the perspective of me and other people that I've spoken to about this, you start noticing that your photography begins to be led by other interests and you start taking photos of other interests that you have. And in some ways, the quicker you can pin down what that interest that you want to photograph is, 
the quicker you'll get to a point where you're taking incredible photos off that subject. It doesn't mean it can't be changed, and that's exactly why there's so much time built in for exploration of that field, because, you know, yeah, it might change, but honing in on, on what that might be is a crucial part of uh, getting to a point where you start taking really incredible photos. Uh, next slice is pretty self-explanatory, really, to be honest, uh, learning that chosen genre. So for example, you spent your thousand hours or 10% of your photography time trying to get to the bottom of what interests you and what field you'd like to spend more time in. And at that point, you need to learn it. So if you're a, a documentary photographer, then you're gonna need to build contacts and journalistic skills in whatever area it is that you wanna go into. If you wanna be a surf photographer, then you obviously you need to get acquainted with the surf. You need to build a network of surfers who you're happy to go and shoot with. You need to be comfortable and proficient in the water. And ultimately, you need to get to grips with how to shoot in the water. Same in the mountains, you need to get good at reading maps, terrain, weather all the skills that you might need in mountains in difficult situations to take great photos in the mountains. If you want to take photos of people, then obviously you've got to develop natural rapport with people. That's a skill. All these things take time and learning how to operate in your genre is again, a huge piece of the puzzle. And again, 10% or a thousand hours. A slightly smaller piece, this one, just 750 hours or 7.5% of the pie. And that's studying theory. Now, personally, I hate that things like the rule of thirds is called a rule because I think it sends out the wrong message. Photography is an art. There are no rules. It's all down to personal preferences. The fact is, though, that the human eye sees things a certain way and it sees some things better than others. That's biological. It's factual. And if you can learn those things, then you stand a much better chance of your photo standing out than if you ignore them. I don't like the fact that they're called rules but it does make sense that they are called rules because we don't have a say in, in how we see things. Uh, another 750 or 7.5% is studying others. So looking at other people's work for inspiration and applying what you've learned in the theory to work out why certain photos work and what's good about them and why other photos don't work and what's not so good about those. So that's a really crucial piece of the puzzle, but the reason that that's only 750 along with studying theory is that you can have too much studying theory and you can have too much studying other people. So I see those things, one of my textbook drawings coming up, I see those things as being sat on a bell curve. So, bear with me again. I'm using a Sharpie because I get criticized for people not being able to see my drawings. So when it comes to studying theory and studying others, initially, the more time you spend on it, the more impact you, uh, you get from that process. However, it gets to a certain point where you can spend too much time studying theory and studying others, and you start to go downhill. And the reason for that is that when you're studying too much theory, you probably uh, risk becoming too conventional and always listening to the rules and not trying to push the boundaries and kind of nudge the rules and, and work out how malleable those rules are. And when you're not doing that, chances are you're not gonna create anything that's kind of edgy in nature. Same as looking at other people. So if you spend too much time looking at other people's work, it can end up clouding your own creative vision and uh, you end up just kind of copying others' photos and others' locations and all that kind of stuff because it ends up as the only thing in your head. So that's why those two things are relatively short amounts of time uh, because they're really, really important but you don't want to do too much of them. Again, in my opinion, you, you might have different opinions if you could let me know below. Uh, next up, the smallest sliver on the scale is gear. This is a, a tiny little appetizer, just 5% 5 or 500 hours. Now gear is hugely important. Finding gear that you uh, feel confident in, that can capture what you want to capture is vital to this part of the process. However, people in my opinion spend too long thinking about gear and not long enough thinking about all the other stuff that goes into learning how to take good photos. So yes, it's vital to do your research and find cameras that you absolutely love and lenses that you absolutely love and lights and accessories that you absolutely love. And once you've found those things, you need to learn to use them, you need to read the manuals and you need to keep abreast of new releases that could help or firmware updates, all that kind of thing. Outside of that though, once you become proficient in your particular gear, once you know exactly where all the menus are, what all the buttons do, and you can do everything on your camera without having to look at it, past that point, you need to be focusing on other things. So yeah, gear, crucially important, but uh, a relatively small sliver. 
And next up, back to the 10%, the 1000 hours, is editing. Editing is a massive part of digital photography and it can really help make good photos great. Uh, so whether you're spending this time editing in Lightroom or learning how to edit in Lightroom or learning how to do particular things in Photoshop or learning when to implement those skills that you've learned, all of it's crucial and is another element that can set you apart from other people. And your editing style, just as much as your shooting style, can almost become like your, your signature and help you get a name for yourself for a particular style. So editing, really, really crucial. So that, all that stuff takes us to uh, half the pie or half the pizza. And from there, we've obviously got another half to fill. And some of you can probably guess what that half is. Shooting. So clearly, being out taking photos is a massive part of this. Some of you might argue that it's probably not quite as big as 50%, but the reason that I've put it at 50% is that while you're out shooting, you're also doing pretty much everything else that sits in this pie. So the more photos you're taking, the more chance you're giving yourself to edit. The more photos you're taking, the more you're experimenting with gear. The more photos you take, the more chance you give yourself to shoot with others and study them. And also the more chance you get to implement the theories that you've studied and maybe put your own spin on them and come up with your own theories. The more you shoot, the more you learn your genre. And the more you shoot, the more you explore that genre and any niches that you might want to explore within that genre. Or maybe you decide you want to change genre entirely. Uh, but that's how I would set it up, that's how I choose to spend my time and I'm imagining that this video is perhaps most helpful to people who might consider themselves as um, stuck in the gap. So if you don't know what the gap is, Ira Glass, I think it might have been someone on behalf of Ira Glass actually that made the video, but there's a video featuring uh, Ira Glass's voice and he's talking about this concept called the gap. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description, it's only two or three minutes long, but it's really powerful, I think. And it's talking about how when you're kind of on the foothills, I guess, of this concept of mastery, you're only just starting out, perhaps you've put in one or 2,000 hours as far as this concept goes, you might find that you, um, know exactly what you want to create. You can you can picture it in your mind, but you just don't have the skills and the know-how to bring it all together yet. That's called the creative gap. And uh, if you're in that place, if you find that you're in that place, then this video hopefully has given you something to think about in terms of in terms of where to where to spend your time. Um, maybe in future videos I'll kind of dig into each of these, but that's a um, bit of an overview of, of how I'd perhaps spend 10,000 hours or, or however long you have on, on learning photography. Thanks for watching. Oh, also actually, this cupboard here, that's just to the side of me, I don't know if you, no, you can't see it in this frame. People keep asking me um, why that is off the ground. I don't know, I don't know who put it in. It was obviously a previous owner, but um, yeah, I've got a, a door, like a, a normal room door about one and a half feet off the ground and it's actually just a tiny little storage cupboard that I keep all my gear in and stuff. It's weird, but yeah, I, I don't know the story behind it. I'm sorry. Oh.